Alola everyone, it's the Munch and welcome back to Pokemon Sun and Moon. Last episode we took on a very special side quest to get the Z Crystal for Eevee and today we're going to be continuing our Alolan adventure on Route 16 as we're heading off to the Upside Down or the Reverse World or basically the alternate dimension of Pokemon Moon. As you guys know I've been playing mostly Pokemon Sun here on the channel and there's actually a special area that we can go to in the post game that will allow us to access the world of Pokemon Moon to get a special legendary Pokemon. Pokemon. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button. And of course, we've got a wild Pokemon encounter. That was like the tiniest patch of grass there, but still a wild Pokemon manages to sneak on through. So we're going to run away from this Ribombi here and make our way to that altar or ruins or I'm not really sure what the place is called actually, but we'll see it in just a second. Now you guys may remember we actually came here a long time ago, I'm not sure in what episode, but there wasn't really much to do and now I found out that you can do something here in the post game. So here is the Lake of the Moon and before we head over that bridge, let's talk to this guy. Oh, you're that trainer who's always popping into the Pokemon Center, ain't ya? This place may have fallen into ruin, but it is still spectacular, wouldn't you say? Even if there's nothing to see here now, I can't help thinking that there being nothing here now bellies the possibility that something could be here. Something wondrous. And I wonder what that wondrous thing might be. I mean, I kind of already spoiled it for you guys, but you can get a very special legendary Pokemon. We're going to be getting none other than Nebby itself in its original tiny form, otherwise known as Cosmog. As you guys can see from my party, I've got a couple of special Pokemon here with me, most notably Nebby, the Solgaleo, so if you're playing Pokemon Moon, definitely make sure to bring your Lunala with you into these ruins, and as you can see from the Rotom decks there on the bottom screen, it's kind of shaped like a sun, so I'm not sure if in Pokemon Moon it's shaped a little bit more like a moon, but I'm pretty sure it's the same regardless, and we can find the opposite altar of the one that you played in your game, or I guess where we played the Sun Flute with Lily here in Pokemon Sun or the Moon Flute in Pokemon Moon. Basically, we're going to be heading to the opposite world. So here we go. And I just realized I might be the dumbest person alive because we're actually not supposed to come here just yet. We have to come here after we've actually traveled to the opposite world, which is accessed from the Altar of the Sun. So it's all right because we can thankfully fly there. So Charizard, fly you fool. And here we are in Vast Pony Canyon. My bad, I actually thought that's where you can access the reverse world, as I've been calling it, or the Upside Down. Uh, those of you that have watched Stranger Things on Netflix might know what I'm talking about, but since it is basically the opposite world, or the world of the opposite version game you're playing, I like to call it the reverse world, or the Upside Down, or the Dark World, I guess. There's a lot of uh, alternative names for it. I'm not sure if there's like an official name for it with the Pokemon games. I don't think they've given it one, so I'm just going to call it the Upside Down. Either way, to access it, you've got to have the legendary of your game in your party and head on up to the altar of the sun or the moon. And maybe now this time around, oh, there we go. We've got this mysterious tear in space time. It's a distortion in the air, but you don't seem to be able to traverse it now. Wait, what the heck? Why not? Are you kidding me? It seems it has to be a very specific time to access this space time hole, but thankfully I think changing your DS time works in this game. And here we are, date and time boys. The current time is, actually it's midday right now. That's interesting, but we're gonna go up to 18, which I believe should be 6 p.m. And there we go. The moment of truth, guys, it is 6 p.m. I've set the game to 6 p.m. and it's time to talk to the strange tear in the sky once again. Beyond the distortion, you can see what looks to be another world. Will we go there? Absolutely we will. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And what lies beyond the mysterious tear in space time? It is the altar of the moon. As I mentioned, you can actually travel to basically the Alola of the other version game. So pretty much right now we're in Pokemon Moon, but in the actual Pokemon Sun cartridge, which is just so, so awesome. You can see the symbol of the moon there. So now if we fly over to the ruins we were just at, thankfully we just went there because that means we can now just fly back over there. You'll see that it is now called the Lake of the Sun and it's time once again, Charizard, fly you fool. Man, I am going to miss saying that once we're done with this game, which should actually be pretty soon. I don't think we've got too much left to do here in Sun and Moon, but I've actually been completing the Pokedex. I know I've been mentioning it every episode, but you might have noticed I've got two other special Pokemon in my party here today. Brione and Darwin, or wait, not Darwin, 
Dartrix. Uh, I don't know why I said Darwin, but um, the evolutions of Rowlet and Poplio, the other two starters of this game, I actually managed to get that Poplio through Wonder Trade, and then the uh, Rowlet from my friend Luke, who played with Rowlet and made an egg for me, which is awesome. Uh, but I've actually been leveling those two up because those are basically the only Pokemon I've got left to fill up the Pokedex, so hopefully we can get that done today as well. But let's get back and focused on the... Uh, task at hand for today which is heading on up to the altar of the sun this time around where we can find that special legendary Solgaleo suddenly roared towards the sky La Leona oh, Solgaleo looks so awesome outside of his pokeball and whoa another Pokemon appeared from somewhere Lunala holy moly this is awesome and as they roar towards the sky, they fuse together to become Cosmog? I'm not quite sure that they fuse, because I'm pretty sure we still have our own Nebby in the bag. I mean, in the party. But, as you guys can see, Cosmog has appeared. And this is actually your chance to finally catch this little legendary Pokemon. So we are, of course, going to be saving our game here and trying to catch him. So here we go. Would you like to take Cosmog with you? Yes! Wait, we don't actually have to battle it? Huh. Okay, then we've received Cosmog. I actually thought we might have to battle it, but there we go Cosmog's data will be added to the Pokedex and BAM! I love it I don't know if these legendaries actually count as part of the Pokedex completion, but I guess we'll find out right now Oh, I think it does actually because we're at 98% that is awesome! The Nebula Pokemon, Cosmog. Its body is gaseous and frail. It slowly grows as it collects dust from the atmosphere. Super duper cute! Oh my gosh, it's got a little butt. <laughs> I did not need to know that about Cosmog. But, oh man, this is such a cute little legendary Pokemon. And of course, it does have one more evolution that we also need to get. So, I'm actually going to be adding this little Cosmog to our party. And that means Nebby, our original Nebby, you've got to go away, little buddy. Oh, I guess I should have kept that Psyche MZ, but whatever. We've got ourselves a little Cosmog. I'm not sure what level it evolves at, but I actually want to check what level it's at right now. Oh, it looks like level 5, so it might take quite a while to get this little guy, girl. I'm not really sure Cosmog has a gender, but right here we've got Lunala, who I finally traded over from my Pokemon Moon version. And it says it is the female evolution of Cosmog, or at least it's said to be, which would of course make Solgaleo the male version of Cosmog, which I think is pretty awesome that they actually made that distinction between the two. Now that we've got those and we've got the little Cosmog, there's only one more missing. And actually in my entire Pokedex, I'm only missing a couple of Pokemon. As you can see here, Decidueye and of course, Primarina, but those two Pokemon in my party are at level 35 as you may have seen So they're basically one more level off from evolving and then I'm missing one more Pokemon Which you guys might know is actually cast form I don't know why the heck cast form is so difficult to find for me personally Like I know where to find it, but I just I keep on trying and I cannot do it But um, I'm actually quite curious what happens now because we're still in the world of Pokemon moon so can we actually continue on our merry way just like we normally would? Because there's actually one more battle that I still want to take on here by the Ruins of Hope. So Charizard, you know what time it is, dude. I didn't think I'd say this again, but fly! And here we are at the Ruins of Hope, where we're going to be taking on a special little battle here. Um, and hopefully that'll give us enough levels to get those two last evolutions that we need. Even though now I guess we also need that Cosmog evolution. But right over here we've got these two sexy, sexy swimmers. And we're going to check them out. Hi there! Yes, you! We're the Hidden Maidens! Not quite so hidden, actually, but... See, we're like here in Alola for a shoot, but we're taking all the shots ourselves! We don't have a cameraman! And that's where I come in, huh? We don't have an agent or anyone to help us, but we're gonna be big someday, soon. That's why we need your help, stranger. We need shots for our PV, a promotional video for our work. I was about to ask what a PV is anyway, but we were thinking like maybe a multi-battle? There'd be this big bad trainer who is so, so mean to the poor hidden maidens, and we'd be all cute and like, oh no. So could you take us on in a multi-battle? Uh, why is the default option no way? I'ma say sure! Yes! I like, totally love you right now! Let's do it! Okay, scene one! The Hidden Maidens run into some trouble at the beach, and action! 
Okay, we're not quite at the beach right now, but close enough, Hidden Maidens. We're gonna be taking these two lovely ladies on here. Swimmer girls, Kylie and Ashlyn. I was about to say that Kylie could be a reference to Kylie Jenner. I'm not sure about the Ashlyn, but um, I do feel like they have a couple of celebrity references here and there in Sun and Moon so far, but it is time for our two starter Pokemon, Puka and El Tigre. Even though Puka wasn't really a starter, I kind of consider him like a starter Pokemon because we pretty much had him from the very start, but uh, Puka going to be very, very effective against their water Pokemon. And I guess El Tigre too, considering he's level 73, and these ladies are only at 45, but you can actually take this battle on as soon as you become the champion of Alola, so their levels are a little bit low, to be honest, uh, even for being the post-game, especially, they're pretty low levels, so they're not quite gonna get our Pokemon the levels that I was hoping for, but thankfully I do still know of one more battle that we can take on to try and get even more, but hey, Cosmog ain't complaining all the way to level 11 already, and going even beyond that, actually. All right, I'm just gonna wait for this to okay there we go zamasu also getting 36 though and it looks like prime arena didn't though but maybe once we take down this uh lantern here prime arena might also get that level up that she needs to evolve or i guess brione brioni i'm not sure how to say that one but the second evolution of poplia or the middle one but puga gonna gain a level as well there and i'm ready for the cosmog to get even more levels here all the way to 15 i'm gonna predict oh that's it actually Brioni does get 36 as well. The waves recede! Blown away by the waterfall! And of course, from this battle, we're gonna get two very special evolutions. The other two starter Pokemon of Sun and Moon. I actually left them for last, but certainly not least, in my Pokedex completion quest. And little Brioni is going up to the sky, and down comes the Prime Arena! I love this water starter Pokemon. Actually, I just love all of the starters of Sun and Moon. Their evolutions, um, even their final evolutions, middle evolutions, first evolutions, they did not disappoint this time around. I really like all three of the starter Pokemon, which hasn't happened in quite a while. There's usually like at least one starter Pokemon that I'm not a huge fan of in the games, but 99% of the decks is now complete, boys. Prime Arena is here, the soloist Pokemon. It controls its water balloons with song. The melody is learned from others of its kind and is passed down from one generation to the next. Really awesome stuff. I love how much detail they put into like the personalities of each of the Pokemon as well. And they also of course have their own signature move, just like El Tigre had the darkest Lariat. Looks like Prime Arena here will have the Sparkling Aria, which is a special move that I think just does damage, but also heals burn. It's a little bit weird that it can heal the uh, status of an enemy, but, you know, still kind of cool that it has that special effect on it, but we're definitely going to be giving that over. And we're not done yet, boys, because we've got another evolution, and this time it is going to be Zamasu. I love that name, too. If you guys haven't seen Dragon Ball Super, you probably don't know who Zamasu is, but... You know, we'll get to it eventually. I think it actually, the first episode of the dub version of Super just came out yesterday. And here we go, Decidueye is here. Really awesome starter evolution as well. Probably my second favorite after El Tigre himself or Incineroar. Sadly, that means Prime Arena is my least favorite, but I still really like Prime Arena. Like, honestly, I really love all three of the starters Pokemon in this region. And like I said, that's not something that usually happens. But finally, we've got 100% in one of our Dexes. We filled up all the Pokemon in the Melee Melee Dex. And here is the Arrow Quill Pokemon Decidueye or Desiju, I heard people say both, but I'm not really sure. It fires arrow quills from its wings with such precision they can pierce a pebble at distances over 100 yards. What the heck is that all about? Our boy Oliver Queen shooting them arrows. And of course, Zamazu has got his own signature move, which is going to be Spirit Shackle. I believe it's actually a ghost type move. Yep. And once you hit your opponent, it actually prevents them from escaping anymore. So I'm going to definitely give that over for the Fury Attack. Grass and ghost type, which is a little bit unexpected as well. I think uh, I at least predicted it would stay a grass and flying type, but they switched it up, gave us the grass ghost. And that is it. We've got all three starter final evolutions. Unfortunately, Cosmog didn't evolve there. Looks like it needs a couple more levels, but that's a cut. That was so savage. Did you really just say savage? Oh my gosh, the memes are real. We're gonna have the best photos. We really owe you this time. 
Here, take these as like your reward. Use them every day and think of us, the HMs. Oh, the Hidden Maidens, of course. Cause these moves actually used to be HMs, but of course HMs have been removed in Sun and Moon for the Poker Ride. And we're gonna be getting Waterfall and Surf, two very, very awesome moves, of course. I was wondering what they were gonna do with them and they've been turned into TMs. We call these Hidden Machines, where we get them from, get it? Yeah, cause they're the Hidden Maidens, HM. Truth is, we've got our own hidden sides, yeah? Maybe we're like high-key stars, but we're low-key HM makers. No, seriously, we make Hidden Machines. How do you do that? Yeah, we're like national treasures back in the Kalos region because of our HM skills. But there's no money to be made in making HMs. You can't even sell them. But we heard that people don't need HMs here in Alola, so we figured, like, maybe we could sell them here as regular old TMs, right? Oh, you scummy little hidden maidens. And we thought we could sell tons of them if we market our them ourselves since we're so cute. Surf and Waterfall are both super strong TMs. You should, like, at least try teaching them to one of my water Pokemon pals. It'll be savage! Thanks again for your help! You'd better stay our fan, don't forget your hidden maidens! Oh, I won't be forgetting you guys anytime soon, believe me, but now that we've got those two HMs, there's one more thing that I still want to do. I guess we could also level up that Cosmog a couple more levels, because we definitely want to get that final evolution, but we're gonna be heading off to Hee Hee City, which we haven't been to in quite a long time, and that means Charizard, you know the deal. That was a pretty cool little side quest though, we got a really nice little dialogue from those Hidden Maidens. I don't know why, I guess the Pokemon really decided to loosen it up a little bit more with their dialogue with these games, and honestly, I love it. I love the dialogue in these games, uh, Team Skull especially was super funny, and it looks like I don't actually have any repels, so we're gonna have to make our way through this Diglett Tunnel with wild Pokemon getting in our way, unfortunately. I'm not exactly sure where it is that we need to use Machamp, but I know it's somewhere here in the Diglett's Tunnel, so we'll just keep running around and hopefully find it eventually. I have a feeling it's down this way. Oh, I don't think so, actually. Man, oh man, wild Pokemon get annoying quick, but I don't have any repels for some reason. I guess I've been trying to catch a bunch of Pokemon, so I didn't really need repels for a little bit, but here is the big old rock I was talking about, and we're gonna push it right out of the way with our buddy Machamp's help. You know what, we might as well stay on Machamp because this is honestly still my favorite Poké Ride. It's just so cool how Machamp carries you like that, but hopefully no more wild Pokémon show up and we can get to the end of the tunnel. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course it was a Zubat too, of all the Pokémon that could have popped up, but this is actually going to lead us to the Kony Kony City Lighthouse, which we've seen so many times, but I was wondering the whole time how we access it. Eevee is a Pokemon bursting with possibilities. Take it to different places, battle at different times, or even try some evolution stones. Of course, we know that. We've got all of the uh, Eevee illusions now, but Alola, hee hee dweller. Oh, she's like waving over to a person over there. That's pretty cool. But we're, of course, heading off up here to the lighthouse, which... I guess we can't go inside the lighthouse. I kind of thought we might be able to, but I wonder if now... Oh, man, it's still blocked off. Are you kidding me? All right, well, the whole reason we came here was actually for this TM, which is going to be Will-O-Wisp. One of the final TMs that I had yet to get here in the wilderness of Alola because I never knew how to actually get to this lighthouse, but it's actually quite easy. You just got to go through the Diglett's Tunnel, and I guess that is pretty much it for all the Easter eggs I could think of, so now we've got nothing left to do but to train up our little Cosmog, and I know the perfect place to actually do that, so we're gonna be flying off to the Shopping District in Howloli. Man, it's been a while since we've been in Howloli, but let's go, Charizard! And the reason we're here is actually to head into the little shopping mall. I know we checked this place out as soon as we became champion because there is actually a special clothes shop here as well that you can buy very, very expensive clothing. Um, now that we actually got that money from Looker and the Ultra Beast mission though, I'm pretty sure we can actually afford some of these clothings, but that is actually the wrong person to talk to. So let's talk to this other lady and see what kind of cool clothes we can pick up for ourselves. Oh. It's actually uh, pretty much just fancy stuff here. We got the collared shirts. Ooh, there's actually an orange one. Hey, that's not too bad. I mean, not really much changes, but as you can see, the clothes here are very, very expensive. So pretty much you can only come here once you become champion. Maybe once you've completed the Ultra Beast mission and have that million dollars from Looker. Hey, that's actually a pretty nice shirt too. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. And um, it looks like the only other thing they've got here are shoes. Honestly, not the best shoes I've ever seen. They got some pretty cool orange ones, but I'm okay without those. And finally, we've got this uh, leather backpack here. 
Not a huge fan of the backpack, but holy moly, it's almost a half a million dollar backpack. Are you kidding me? And finally, we've got the aviators, which I, of course, have some of those already as well. But you know what? We might as well pick up the gray ones. Bam! No, I'm under a million dollars now. That's so sad. All right, whatever. I'm going to put on those clothes, though, because they look pretty cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, this isn't actually the place that I meant to show off because I did say there's somewhere here we can train our little Cosmog. And that is actually going to be the Battle Buffet right on over here. I don't know if I ever showed this off in a video, but you can actually come here and take on some pretty high level battles. Oh, are you kidding me? What? I'm pretty sure I haven't done this today. Maybe it's because I changed my DS time earlier. Oh man, that kind of sucks. Well, I guess we've got to go to the Elite Four then to train up our little Cosmog. Though there is actually one more battle I can think of, but there is one more battle that I know of we still haven't taken on here in Alola, and it is going to be here at the Pony Meadow. Well, actually, it's at the Pony Gauntlet, the uh, little area leading up to the Battle Tree. Speaking of which, um, I do intend on making some Battle Tree videos, but because the Battle Tree is a little bit more focused on, like, I guess not really competitive battling, but definitely a bit more of a serious challenge than usual battles. I think I'm going to make that its own series, just taking on the battle tree. But for now, we've got the final trial captain, Mina, here. Oh, the one from the Great Composition. Looks like you've beaten everybody else in this place, huh? Then have a battle against Captain Mina. Let's get our Z on. I hope you're ready for my extraordinary Z power of me and my Pokemon. Let's do it. We're going to take her on. I'm going all out big time. Me and my team are all full power to the max. All right, Mina, I'm ready to take you on, and hopefully we can get enough levels on our little Cosmoc from this. Oh, I actually should have put the Lucky Egg on him, or it, but here we go. Captain Mina's final battle. We actually took her on during the Looker Ultra Beast mission as well, and I think her team is relatively the same. You can take her on pretty much... Um, they're around the same time, so I'm expecting that there's really not much difference in her levels or her Pokemon, but she is going to be starting off with a Klefki, and I'm just gonna get the heck out of here. Oh, I was so used to that last double battle that we took on that I'm like, wait a second, why didn't we get to pick what Pokemon we targeted? And I guess it's because it's a single battle, I don't know. Um, but, oh, the Cosmog is only at level 15, actually, so I highly doubt we'll be able to get uh, the level ups that we need from this battle. Really think I should have put on the Lucky Egg, but it's okay. Um, it's going to take me a while to level up that Cosmog anyway, so uh, we might as well just at least do this one last battle because I'm pretty sure this is like one of the last trainers I've yet to battle in Alola. There might be a couple of more of those trainers that like only battle you once the entire route is done, um, but I think I almost took out almost all of those as well. So yeah, this is pretty much one of the final battles we're ever going to get here. And we do still have Zamazu and Primarina in the party, so they're going to be getting some levels as well. But Gramble is going to be the next Pokemon, and I guess we'll bring out Karama. I mean, it's kind of appropriate, actually, that I've got pretty much my three main Pokemon of my party here. Like, if I were to say what were my main three favorite Pokemon from my team, it would definitely be El Tigre, Puka, and Karama. Uh, shout out to uh, Ronda, though, as well. And, of course, Sarah, Kazooie. Uh, Loba, oh my gosh, all of my Pokemon were awesome. I feel like I'm missing one though. Oh yeah, P-Hat, how could I forget little old P-Hat? But let's take on this Gramble up next, and oh gosh, maybe this was not my smartest idea, as Kurama is going to take quite a hefty chunk of damage there from the Stone Edge. Uh, I think we can do this though, maybe if we use our Z-Crystal? Oh, I do have the Sub-Zero Slammer, so let's go for it. It's been a while since we used a Z-Move, and yo, got the Swag Glasses there. Oh man, this is going to be so savage, guys. I am not one to usually say savage, but after those Hidden Maidens said it, you know, I figure it's okay if I say it now. So let's go for our Savage Slammer or the Sub-Zero Savage. I don't know. Which one sounds better? I'm not really sure, but will that take it out? Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Does not quite take it down. And that means Kurama is going to go down instead. Man, that sucked. All right, well, uh, let's finish it off with uh, Puka here. Unless uh, Mina actually goes for a Forest Door, which I don't think she will, but, you know, she always could, I guess. Hey, no Forest Door, nice. So Gramble will go down. Unfortunately, Kurama got taken down, though. I really would have liked everybody to survive this battle, but it's okay. I think that means more experience for our little Cosmog here. So level 20 already, and Ribombi is going to be her next Pokemon. Thankfully, that is something El Tigre can definitely handle. Oh, I've just noticed she had the light screen. That's why we didn't do that much damage. Man, if she didn't have that light screen up from earlier, Kurama totally would have taken down that Gramble. 
I guess that's just a little bit unfortunate. I should have thought about that, but then again, it's not like El Tigre really had that many great attacks to handle the Grand Bull anyway, so... Um, now we've got to take on this Ribbon B. I don't know what attack that was right there that it used. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. I think it might have been a fairy move though, considering it did a lot of damage there. But either way, our Flare Blitz does take it down. That recoil though is definitely hurting us, but another level for the Cosmog. And our two other starter Pokemon. And what's up next for you, Mina? Shinotic. Alright, thankfully most of her Pokemon are weak to fire as well. They're not just fairy type, but also seem to be like grass or bug or whatever. Um, so Flare Blitz will definitely be good against this Shinotic. Very weird Pokemon. Definitely one of the most uh, underrated, I think, Alolan Pokemon. At least personally, I have not seen it used too many times. And I don't know, more lol is just kind of a weird oddball Pokemon. Like, I, I really don't know much about it, honestly. So maybe in a future playthrough of Sun or Moon, I can check out uh, Shinotic there and appreciate it a little bit more. But for now, Mina's got one more Pokemon to send out. And it is going to be the Wigglytuff. So just to finish this off a little bit quicker, I'm going to go for a nasty plot here. And that is definitely going to be able or help us uh, one shot it here with a Psychic or a Thunderbolt. Honestly, either one will probably work as long as we live through this Hyper Voice. And uh, good stuff, Puka. Definitely living up to the Puka name there, whatever that means. And here we go. Will this one shot it? I believe so. Nice. Puka, good stuff. We managed to do it. Didn't quite get the levels that we needed to evolve Cosmog, I don't think, because I'm pretty sure it evolves at level 40, but hey, at least we get a new attack, if teleport counts as an attack, that is. Zamazoo and Primarina, level 39 already, and that is it for Captain Mina. I'm shocked at your strength. I wish I could say the same, Mina, but, huh, well, this is frustrating. I failed to really use my full power, but it was a fun battle, so take this, big time. And she's gonna fork over a bottle cap, which is actually pretty useful because I plan on making a little guide on those soon enough. So I'd like to draw a picture of the way you look when you're battling Orange. Let's have another full power Pokemon battle again sometime, yeah? Sure thing, Mina. Unfortunately, our Cosmog didn't quite evolve just yet, so I guess we're gonna need even more training to get it up to those levels. I'm a little bit tired though of training up Pokemon because I've been doing that non-stop for the last week trying to fill up that Pokedex. So I think that is actually going to be the end of this episode. Next time we will take on one more battle here in Alola and finally complete our Pokedex. I've still got to find that cast form. So I guess that's what the next episode is going to be. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time on Pokemon Sun and Moon.